how good can you get? My spectroscopy system set up by an amateur like me can really be. Short answer, pretty good. Long answer. Technology, the internet and eBay have made it possible for some of us to acquire and mess with a wide range of equipment only accessible to professional and government only a few decades ago. A few people like myself have made video about low level radioactivity. But how does this second hand equipment compare with modern professional instrument and much more sensitive technology? Well, one of the perks of working in the lab is having access to very sensitive equipment and standard extremely pure chemicals. Enters Bismuth 214, one of the decade old of uranium 238 with a half life of 20 minutes. This radioisotope builds up in uranium ore where it could be separated to produce this very pure uranium standard right here. Now, from the time of its isolation, the decay family of uranium is reset and the secular equilibrium has to build up again the activity for each of its isotope. Bismuth is pretty far along the road of stability, so it builds up very slowly. So I tried to see if uh, my gamma spectrometer could uh, pick it up and, uh, and compare my result with a professional mass spectrometer known as uh, ICPMS. First, I uh, reanalyzed my uh, uranium ore to see how much of bismuth uh, 214 can possibly accumulate in a rock over millions of years. And there's the spectrum. So bismuth 214 has all these tiny peaks right here and, they, and they're all clearly visible. So next I'll try this 1000 ppm uranium standard, only a few years old. And I set the uh, acquisition for uh, 20 minutes. And again, I could see the peaks. So I thought I calculated how much bismuth 214 is responsible for all this activity. By adding the count at each energy minus the background, I had a total count of 155.7. Now divide this by the acquisition time of 20 minutes or 1200 seconds, and we get 0 0.12975 counts per second. Now this must be corrected to compensate for the detector's efficiency, the dead time, the, the geometry of the source, etc., etc. So my low estimate is 1.29 back rolls and uh, my high is about 258. Applying this equation gives us the total number of bismuth 214 atoms in the sample with a lower limit of about 2200 atoms and a higher of somewhere around 4400. So in the neighborhood of 3500 atoms is uh, our answer. So now let's compare this with a professional mass spectrometer that can routinely measure down a PPP level and even with extra care go down a PPT level or part per trillion and even resolve isotopes. Let me apologize in advance for the very poor quality of sound on this uh, next segment. The lab is uh, pretty loud and I have shitty equipment. So I'm here at the lab with my good friend Ida, PhD in chemistry. He's going to explain exactly what happened and uh, what we had no result for the instrument that cost more than my house. So we tried to uh, detect bismuth 214 uh, in the uranium standard with a concentration of south ppm. Uh, to do that, we ran a series of uh, injections. We did five injections with blank, which is 2% nitric acid, and five injections of south ppm uranium standard, which was also prepared in 2% nitric acid. Um, we optimized all the parameters to pick up the smallest signal we possibly can with this uh, instrument. Our average counts are a 2, standard deviations are 0.8 and 1. In analytical chemistry there is a rule that in order to detect something you need to exceed noise. We should see at least 6 counts. In our case, uh, average counts for this one are below 4, so it's below uh, 3 times noise and we conclude that it's not detected. So would, yeah, would you say it's fair to say we did not pick it up with the ICPMS? Yes, yes, we did not pick it up with ICPMS. Yes, gamma spectroscopy can pick up a lot lower count of radioactive atom, but stable isotope, ICPMS take the lead. But is it really surprising though? ICPMS deal with energy some order of magnitude much lower than gamma spectroscopy does. I think it's worth noting that the scintillation detector in gamma spectroscopy uses a photomultiplier tube, which can also be used in, in some mass spectrometer as well. These devices are so sensitive, in fact, they can resolve a single photon, but the electronic noise often drowns the signal and raises the detection limit. 
I'd like to take the time to thank my friend and co-worker Ida for his time, his patience, and his expertise. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation of ICPMS and gamma spectroscopy comparison. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up if you like it, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Damn it. Also, I want to extend a very special thanks to Adam Barassa for sending me these heating ribbons that will come very handy for a lot of different projects. So thank you again, Adam. Your support of the channel is much appreciated. Thank you, sir.